My name is Mike Sheldon. I'm from Petersburg, Alaska. I was born and raised there. <clears throat> Been there for 66 years. The incumbent that I'm running against is actually my classmate, uh, Bert Stedman. But he left Petersburg at, at seventh grade. And so he went off to Sitka. And so when he took off, of course I stayed. And I, I graduated out of Petersburg High School in 1974 and went to Port Andrews Community College. And I learned a trade of mechanics and welding. And I got a phone call in Port Angeles from a lady. Her name is Tiny Phillips. She was born in Petersburg. And she said, Mike, come up to Fairbanks. They're hiring on the Alaska pipeline. And so I jumped on the jet and I went up there and I joined 302 operator engineers and went out as a uh, light duty mechanic and welder. And I ended up in Dietrich, Alaska, which is above the Arctic Circle. And, and, for, and I worked for Greens Construction in a shop. And what my job was is when trucks uh, broke down, uh, broken frames or whatever, I'd weld them back up. Because when we were taught in school that when you weld steel, the weld is supposed to be stronger than the steel. It's not like aluminum. And so we, I went ahead and welded up trucks and w went out in the field and worked on graders. And when I left uh, Coldfoot and Dietrich and Isabel Pass off the pipeline, I came back to Petersburg and I bought me a commercial fishing vessel. And I fished for two decades. And the last vessel that I ran was a 48-foot pocket saner from Cordova. I, bought, I, I leased a boat out of there for the last two years and I retired in 98. And after that, I went to work at the Kensington Gold Mine as a fuel truck driver. And I drove uh, fuel, I went down to the tanks down below and I drove the fuel up the mountain. And my supervisor told me that, Mike, you've got the most dangerous job in all the camp. If you wreck this fuel truck and dump this fuel on the ground, it shuts the whole mine down. And it'll be down for months and even weeks, or, or weeks or even months. And so I was very careful, went up and down that hill, never had one accident. And I was pretty proud of myself for being able to do that. And the mountain was steep and there were sure cliffs off the sides. It's like very dangerous. So after the Kensington trip, I came down and I worked on the Alaska Main Highway as a ticket agent. And I worked there at the Petersburg Terminal and put my time in there. And after that, I became a handyman for the last 10 years. And my father taught me how to be uh, a, a good carpenter. And so I just learned off of him and went out and did my carpentry work. And I retired last year. So a few years back, I was sitting in my chair, it's in 2018, and I thought about, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw my hat in. So I ran for governor. I ran against Dunleavy in the group there and went up to Anchorage. I'm a Republican, a conservative Republican, and I'm my own grassroots, old school Republican that believes that a child is very important in life and they should have a chance to live. <clears throat> and that's one of my huge stands that I have is to keep our children alive because they're their future generations. And without the children being alive, our economy suffers from it because millions upon millions of babies have been aborted. And we're suffering it because that generation is gone now. So I fight for the boys and girls. So I think that uh, the permanent fund dividend is another huge crisis that we're going through. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is lining up to, to take that money. There's $81 billion in a permanent fund. Now there's some people that don't need the permanent fund money and, and don't care if it goes up or down, but I'm not thinking about the ones that don't need it, it's the ones that do need it. That, that, it, that is important. And Governor Hammond put together a great plan. In 1981, we received our first permanent fund dividend and it was only $1,000.36, but it was something, it was a milestone. And what he did say before he passed away, he said that one day they're going to come after the permanent fund dividend. And sure enough, they did in 2016. Governor Walker with uh, Bert Stedman and the rest of his group um, to 
petition walker to go ahead and take the first thousand out of our permit fund. And it was called a veto. And so uh, Senator Winanowski, he's a Democrat, actually went to court for our dividend to try to save it. And he fought hard, but the state had already made up their mind and the judges already made up their mind that they were gonna go and allow the fund to be robbed. So they said that the word shall was not strong enough. And if you uh, know what the word shall is, it's one of the strongest words that we have in our constitution. And it means you do not, you can't touch. And so it takes a vote of the people to make any decision to change the permanent fund dividend. We have a constitutional convention coming up in the ballots. It's gonna be in the back of the ballot, vote yes or no. You ought to all vote yes because it's going to be important that we get the delegates in place to seal the deal on a permanent fund so that no one like me as a senator or a representative or a governor can can move it, can touch it, can change it. Now, as for me as a senator, I stand by the old statute that Governor Hammond put in place. I believe that that uh, percentage a market value the POMB that they put together two years ago is an illegal bill. They should have never have done that, but they did it anyway. They skirted around the statute. In other words, what they do is they break their own laws or they don't talk about it. SB 26 was the bill that they used. If percentage of market value means it's a 5%, 4%, they could change it whatever they want, whatever they want. If they want to take more money from the perm fund dividend or dividends, they can do it. If they want to give us more, they can. Where with the statute, it's calculated by a formula. It's called a five-year average. And that formula is calculated. The, per, the, the permanent fund sends it down to the House, the Senate, and the governor. And it's been signed in and announced in October. That's it. They don't vote against it. They don't vote for it. They approve it runs right on through. With a percentage of market value, what they've done with, done with it is they've added the, the, the actual amount of permanent fund dividend into the budget. Mm -hmm. And it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be a standalone bill, a standalone statute. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're making people, senators and representatives, vote for something that shouldn't even be there. Like what happened to uh, Chris Kirka, or yeah, Christopher Kirka yes. and David Eastman. Yes. When they voted against that big package, and now they're getting you know demonized because you know you stole our our five thousand dollars. It was because of you. You said no, and that's wrong, wrong, wrong thing. The people, yeah. the people were focused so much on the money that they didn't realize that there was a principle involved. Yeah. And the principle was that there was abortion money in the bill. And there's uh, other things that were in there were, were uh, made our budget, the most biggest budget we've ever had in history for Alaska. And it should never have been in there. David Eastman is really going through the ringer right now. He's a representative out of Wasilla. This guy is a true, strong patriot. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're, they're running him through the ringer. And they, they don't even want him to be on the ballot. It's, it's that bad. But yet 77% of the people in Wasilla voted him in. He's got a 100% record for We the People. There's no fault in the guy. He's, 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 he's sworn to do what the people have asked him to do. But we have a lot of rhinos, Republicans, that are in office right now, and I'm running against one of them, and his name is Bert Stedman. He's been in there for 19 years and appointed by uh, uh, Murkowski. And that's when Sarah Palin took over after Murkowski as governor and she sold his jet. You remember the jet that he had? He bought himself a the state, bought him a jet so that he could fly to Washington, D.C. and back and so forth and so on. Well, she sold it. She also is the one that Sarah gave us the 1000 extra dollars in a permit fund dividend. She gave us a bonus. And no other governor has ever done that before ever given us money. They usually take, 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 and they never give, give, give. Well, she, she had done that. And I'll just talk a little bit about Sarah. There's a lot of people that, uh, some people that don't like her because she's been politicized, but she's also done some really good things for the state of Alaska. She went in there and she upset the cradle as governor. 
and she, and she got attacked, like David Eastman's being attacked right now. See? But the news and the papers, they made her look as ugly as they possibly could make her, make her look terrible. And yet she was really a good governor. She really did have a heart. Mm -hmm. um, got a good head on her shoulders. She, she had a bill called the ACES bill. Does anyone ever know about the ACES bill? It's the ACES bill is, is to tax the oil companies more than they're than we're getting money from now. And they shot that bill down because big corporations, big businesses didn't want that. They want they want more money for themselves. Mm -hmm. See, they sit in these big, huge corporate uh, uh, offices and they strategize how they can make money. And that's their job. They hire people to learn how to make money. Well, the state of Alaska, what they do is they give the money away because they don't really know what they're doing half the time. We, we had a friends that got it. They had a friends that got it in uh, June of last year and the year before. And guess what they did? They shut the audit down. You know why? It's because they were digging too deep into the books. Stedman was involved in that too. See, there's these senators and these representatives should be in jail. They should be in penitentiary for lying, <clears throat> thieving against the people. They've, there's a lot of backdoor deals going on, a lot of framing going on. And, and, and telling them, um, you need to do it this way or, or we're going to do something about it. And the Frenzy Goddess is one of the first things I'd like to get back on stage again. I'd like to get a complete, deep audit clear into the books. I want to know where every penny has gone for the state of Alaska and where it's landed. I want to know where all the, all the money is. Is, is, is it in secret bank accounts? I want to know where your money's at. It's, it's your money. It's, it's not it's not the government's money. It's your money. It's we the people that make decisions for the state of Alaska. And I think it's uh, hey Doc. Hi, how you doing? Real good. I'll go give you a call. Okay. There we go. But anyway, it's a mess in Juneau. It's just it's a giant mess and. Just like Wilson, I'll give you Wilson for example. There's a guy, Stephen Wright is running against him in Wasilla. Anyone know Wilson, Senator Wilson? Well, they accused him of, of, of taking a camera and looking under women's dresses up there at the Capitol building. Well, you know what? You know what they did, don't you? They, they framed him. They, and they made a little marshmallow out of him. And so Stephen Wright, he ran with me when I was uh, running for governor in 2018. And the kid is really smart. He's, he knows booking, financing. He worked on, on bombers in the Air Force. Uh, he's a very, very intelligent person. And he's running against Wilson. Um, uh, Scalpus, Kenny Scalpus said out of Huna, he's running for representative for Southeast on the Northern section. He's gonna, he'll be a, a great patriot, you know, for the state of Alaska. So what's going on now is it's a grassroots movement. It's time that the people stand up and come in with volume and force in this next uh, coming election. We've got to get the old school out of there. They're just, they're, they're all twisted. They're all special interest. Bert Stabenow, I'll give you an example. He received over $20,000 from the trawlers out of Washington, Oregon and California. We're having a serious problem with the trawlers getting special permits to come into our waters and, and raping our oceans. They take everything. They take killer whales, they take sea lions, they take everything. When they swoop them up, that's not fishing. You know, that's, that's destroying our environment, our ocean bottoms. And for him to go to Washington, D.C. and to receive money like that tells me that he's not standing up for the Alaska, he's not standing up for the people, he's standing up for himself and special interests. And this, this is just one example of, of who, who I'm up against and who you're up against. And <clears throat> we need to make a huge change there. We need to get them out of there. There's so many that we need to get out. And as far as our governors are coming up here, you know, Kirka would have been a good governor. I really believe it. But see, just because of the shenanigan that went on with the budget, mm -hmm. you know, he got, he got aced out. The problem is that people are following the money. And when you follow the money, you might as well go ahead and just shoot yourself in the foot and bleed to death because that's what you're doing to the state. You gotta quit following the money because they're backed by big corporations. Stedman's backed by Wells Fargo, 
big bank, right? He's backed by oil companies. He's backed by trawlers. See, it's not for the good of the state of Alaska. It's for him and, it, and, and what he believes in. We had a meeting here at Thorn Bay, um, uh, a, a video meeting, and I was on there, and Ortiz was on there, and I, I let Bert know what I felt about him. You know, I gave him both barrels because he deserves to hear it. And his head was down, he was, he was embarrassed, you know, shaken. I told him that, you know, he's a thief for stealing the permanent fund dividend from the people. One of the gentlemen there at the office in uh, Thorn Bay come out and said, Mike, you see, I, I saw you there on, he says, what you had to say, most people would never have would have said, you know, because they're scared. They're frightened, they're walking, they're walking scared. I'm not scared. I am not scared of anything or anybody. I just, I go forward, I let them know what, what I feel. You know why I do that? Because I think about you all. And then I think about your family and your, your wife and your children, see? That's what, that's what I'm standing up for. I'm thinking about this little one right here. What am I gonna leave her, you know, when I die, when I'm buried? What am I gonna leave her? Am I gonna leave her hell on earth? Or am I gonna leave her something that she can prosper off of? You know, that's why we need to, we all need to stand up. And it's, it's, it's gonna be a battle. Uh, the last primary that I was in, I, I took 37% of the votes. I came close. But there was a lot of shenanigans going on too in that. Um, and, but with this new rank voting, which Bert Stebbin voted against, and you know why he voted against it is because I wouldn't be here talking to you if it would have been the old system. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the primary uh, knocks off the low people on total polls because the state workers vote and the Democrats vote. And all, most of the rest of the conservative people and, and all the rest of them, they sit home and wait for the general. They don't publicize it on the radio. They don't publicize it on the TV. They don't put it in the newspaper. It's a quiet vote. And so usually the, all the, the low people on the total poll get knocked out and then Stedman is by himself. And then here I am down here with 37% of the votes and I have to run in as a write-in and I get like 5% of the votes on the write-in, see? But since we have this rank voting, I'm right there with them. My name's going to be right there. Well, so there's a right benefit to this this time on that particular thing. And yeah. The prices, other prices, not so good. Yeah. For it's going to give us leasing maybe. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. And we still have. <laughs> and since it, there's four four uh, ranks for for my area, and there's only two of us running, and no one will run against that one because they're fearful. Of and I'm not fearful a bit. You already know that by what I've been saying. Uh, but I just think that uh, it's going to be a good race. I think that every Tom, Dick, and Harry and Jane is going to be out there voting. You know, it's going to be the Republicans, the Democrats, the nonpartisan, the whole nine yards are all going to be out there voting. And if they have any knowledge at all about Stedman and they look at him, and had his record, <clears throat> they will say, I've had enough. It's time for someone new. Let's give Mike a chance. Let's see what he can do. And if you give me a chance, and I come back to this community, <clears throat> you'll be saying, Mike, Mike, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, because it's going to be for you. It's not going to be for me. It's going to be for my daughter and your families and your, and your work. How are you doing? Hey, Mike. There's more. There's lots of chairs back in the corner. Sure. Oh, oh, we're having a couple of chairs. But it'll be all for we the people. And that's what I'm running and standing on. It's not going to be about me. It's going to be all about you. And it's time that we have people to stand up and get out of their chair. And that's what I did at home. I got out of my chair and I stood up. Because you know why? No one else would do it. No one else would get out of the chair and come against these people. This, these people that are controlling, controlling the world and controlling our state. And the reason why they're, that Alaska is one of the corruptest states in the union is because of the permanent fund dividend. $81 billion is sitting in there. And everyone's lining oh, yeah. up. To, 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 to drawn to it. Yes. 
the stock market's coming after it, the, the GCIs, uh, the banks, they all want a piece of it. But first, they have to get rid of us. And they're trying to kill the middle income. <clears throat> they're trying to kill small business. We have 90% of, of our population is small business. And they're, they're coming after it. If they can kill the medium income business, people, we're done. That's it, it's over with. They got us. That's why this movement that we're, we're having right now, we're fighting right now, is going to overpower them because I, I believe that we can overpower these people if we move at, at, on a heavy force because they're coming after our Second Amendment rights. They want our guns. Once they get our guns, that's going to that's gonna hurt big time. What are we going to use to fight with? See what I mean? We can't allow it. too many countries. We're the last union. We're the last country in the world that the whole world's looking at right now. They're looking at the United States of America. What are we going to do? Are we going to sit back and allow them to, to take our guns from us, to take our rights away from us, our freedoms away from us, or are we going to make a stand? And to make that stand is to put senators like myself and others in place that can fight for our freedoms and our liberties and our justice and our constitution and what we believe in and our children's uh, future. And, and if we can do that, they're going to stand back and say, wow, that, that's too powerful. I can't, we can't handle that. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't handle it. These, these guys have got a, a huge backing. And Sarah Palin... She put, they put representatives in, in, in jail because they were bad. See, you see why they went after her? See, and that's what we need to do here. We, people need to go to jail. People need to be hung. I mean, you know back in the day in, in the Constitution and the Tea Party what they did back then. You know, you, you know what they did. They took them out and they hung them. They, they shot them. Because what were they? They were tyrannical people trying to destroy our nation. What happened when we came from, from Europe and we, they, the pilgrims came over to the United States? What did they try to get away? They tried to get away from the king over there. It was corrupt to the bone. They wanted to start a new pilgrimage. They wanted to start a new nation that would be free of that. And now, like what's happened, it's came all, come right back around on us now. We're at the pinnacle point at this time, in this age, that we could lose Alaska and we could lose this nation. A bunch of tyrannical people, and they're the minority too. And guess what, we're the majority. We're the power. We are, we the people. What does the Constitution say? What are the first words it says on there? We the people. We the people. Why did we? Why do we have the Second Amendment right to protect us against government? See, and why do they want to take our guns away from us so that they can control us? So they're they're responsible for our fuel prices. They're responsible for our groceries. They're responsible for our taxes. When I ran for governor up in, uh, I went up to Anchorage and I met with all the delegates of Alaska in the Republican Party, and I was the first one to speak. And I pointed out there, and the representatives and the senators were there too, and I says, you know whose fault this is? Why the Sears store in Anchorage is closing? You know whose fault it is? I said, it's you politicians. I says, you, 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 you guys have caused this trouble. You ought to be ashamed of yourself of what you've done. I, I pointed it out to them, and it is. It's their bills, their policies, their laws, their red tape that's causing small businesses to go down and go under. You can't even, uh, you can't even have a, uh, a vegetation building up in Anchorage without going through so much red tape to be able to grow lettuce and grow tomatoes and what have you. They got it locked up, tighter to drum. Because they don't want you on. They want you on pharmaceutical drugs and they want you on their own agenda, see? They don't want you to be healthy. They want you to be sick. Okay? So it's a mess in Juno. And guess what? I'm walking into it. And I know what I'm walking to. I Dick Carr in Petersburg said, Mike, I says, I sure hate to see you go into politics. He says, I hate to see it. 
He said, but you know something? I'm proud of you that you're doing it, and I'll be voting for you. Because I know your heart is right. And it is. And it's something I'm going to stand by, and I'll be someone that's not going to give up and quit and, and, and cower. And I will rebuke those that come to me that try to uh, dismay me from you. I will let them know. I'll tell them to get out of my office. I have no, no time for you. I don't like lobbyists. Lobbyists are one of the worst uh, tools that government uses against the people. They come in there, they have special meetings in hotels, and they talk about what they can do to shaft the people. And then they come in and remind the House and Senate members of what their duty is. Your duty is to vote no on this. Your duty is to vote yes on this, depending on whatever the vote is to sway towards them. Um, I will not be talking to lobbyists. You'll never see me. And if I do say something to them, it would be to, to get away from me. So... I would like to take some questions. If I know I've been rambling on here, but I'd love to take some questions. If, if you would. Uh, so you you said that uh, it sounds like you're in favor of the uh, ranked choice voting to a certain extent because I'm here talking to you right now because of it. Yeah. Okay. Now Stedman voted against it, so doesn't that kind of speak a little bit about about why he voted against it? Because he's always had. He's always been in the general election. I get that. I yeah. get that. But then with, with this, this last time around, mm -hmm. you know, the, the clear majority did go Republican, but we got a Democrat sitting up there right now. Oh, I don't, for I'm, U.S. I'm, House. You're talking U.S. House. I'm talking U.S. House, yeah. yeah. On, on that one, you know, on that, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, portion of the vote, but so that, that that's concerning. Right, but the whole, so what you're saying, the whole system enabled that to happen, which is a bad deal. You know, I, to be honest with you, I think the system is corrupt. And I think that Mike Lindell, if anyone know Mike Lindell? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's been out there talking about Dominion Smartomatic machines that, that are so easily hackable um, that, and proven, you ever seen, read the, uh, seen the movie, uh, 2,000 meals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, see, all all that stuff is it's just obvious that that's what they've done. And if if Mike Liddell says that Alaska is one of the corruptest uh, states in the union, I believe him because I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, that's not the first time I heard that. So. Kenny Scaffold said I give an example. He ran um, against Price Tompkins out of Sitka. He was ahead by a large margin, and by the time the midnight midnight hour. Uh, turned over, he started losing. And by the time a week or two later, he's making it worse. And finally, about three weeks later, he was behind. That's saying most of the votes that he was ahead. Mail-in ballots is a bad deal. Yeah, terrible. You need to go and vote in person and bring your own pen with you that's got a ball on it, it's got black, and mark it in. The felt pens has been bleeding through and and sometimes the machines don't even pick it up, and other times they'll say, that, well, we can't take a ballot because it's used, you've used felt pen on it, so they throw it out. But then they'll tell you, though, to go ahead, they'll tell you to go ahead and use it, though. Right. See? They provide the pen. When it's just the opposite. You're not, you shouldn't be using it. Yeah. They'll provide the, the felt tip on purpose. Say it again? They provide the felt tip on purpose. The they do. Place. That's what they did in Petersburg. They, yeah. they provided felt pens. So, well, that was going to be my next question about getting rid of the Dominion uh, yeah. system here. Yeah, because those things are programmable anyway. You can you can get actual uh, votes by the any, programming they can do. Anytime any there's there software, it can be hacked. So, I, is there any other countries? Is there any initiative to get rid of those? There is, and they're working on it right now. Um, Matsu, I understand one of the states in the union have already done this. They, Matsu they, Guru voted to ban the Dominion. Matsu, there you go. They've already done it. They, they're not using the paper ballots ballot only. That's true. Sure. That, that's, that's good. But I think it's way beyond rank voting that our problem is. Our, our problem is in Juno. Our problem is the division of elections. I think that there needs to be a serious in investigation and 
people need to be put in jail for what they've done. That's what it's, 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 it's terrible. And I could have just given up and, and not ran and realized that, Mike, you don't have a chance because the machines are going to switch the votes. But I figured, well, I'm a Christian and I believe in the Lord. And I've been praying to God that God would put a firewall up and stop this inact action that they're doing to re uh, turn votes the other direction. Because I don't know what else we can do. We are up against the wall right now. We can't do anything. They're doing it all. But if we have a creator in heaven that knows what's going on and steps in and does it himself, because he's sick and tired of what's going on. He's tired of his babies being aborted and murdered in this, in this state. Five babies have died today. Five tomorrow will die tomorrow. The no, next day, another five. In Alaska, yeah. He's just in Alaska. Just in Alaska, yeah. The, uh, the court system, Supreme Court system, turned over abortion to each state. No. Yeah. They finally ruled. They ruled that Roe versus Wade was not legal to begin with. It was not voted in by the House and Senate. It was an act by the Supreme Court, which is illegal. Right. It goes through the judicial system, right? So they finally realized it, and they got enough Supreme Court members on it to realize that we've got to overturn this. So in the state of Alaska, I have an opportunity to create a bill, a Senate bill, to stop abortion in Alaska and save our little boys and girls. Hey, guys, so quiet. To save our little boys and girls from a death. And that's what I'm going to do. That's one of the first things that I'll put in place. And I know David Eastman, I pray to God he's still around, but he'll be right there behind me. And I'll, I'll, either, I'll be right there behind him if it goes that route. Well, there's been numerous uh, legislators who are being thrust about by Lori Reinhold. She just, you know, she got loose from out there. And, and I don't know how many others. There's just anybody who's, you know, going to go against the machine is, is being attacked from, from the elements of the, you know, the media and, 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 and everything about it, you know, just terrible. So yeah. I hope you have allies. I hope there's allies. That, that there's other, other well, our, our allies are Heavenly Father, but yeah. Mike Schauer was another one. He lost the primary. Was he in front? Yeah, he was one of them, too, that lost the primary. Mm -hmm. Uh, see, these guys, all of a sudden, the light is lit up in their head that they're come, being come against heavy. And when you try to do something good, you get attacked. And that's the way they play the game up there. When I ran for a governor in 2018, I went up to Juneau for the first forum, and I got zero votes out of Juneau. And I walked out of there... And I just was downcast. And I, I said, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, what happened? And the Lord, I just felt the Lord speak to me. He said, Mike, you won. And I said, well, how did I win? Because you got zero votes. They were so scared of you, of what you had to say, that they all voted against you. You actually won. And I, th I thought about that. You know, you're right. So then I went up to the forum up in, in Anchorage, and they did the same thing, delegates all over Alaska, and they started voting, and I got 1%, 5%, 10%, 12%, 15 18 20 22 24 I needed 35% of the votes, 22 24 and Babcock was the chairman of the Republican Party, and he freaked out because Dunley was supposed to win this thing, right? He had Dunleavy signs everywhere. The whole place was full of Dunleavy. And he shut the votes down. He killed the voter. And Juno came up to the podium on the side and started screaming and yelling, what is going on? Our clicker stopped clicking. We can't vote. Well, Dunleavy shut the vote down because I got up to 27% of the votes. I only needed just a handful more votes to get to 35, and they would have had to recognize me as a potential candidate for governor of Alaska. See, see how how they play? Oh, we know. They no, play dirty. No, we We've been there. Yeah. And, and, and I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative Republican. I'm a, an old school Republican and stood up for the people. And the people came to me afterwards. They surrounded me and said, Mike, we haven't heard a person like you since Ronald Reagan. 
They were so excited. And also, Mike, you didn't even bring up a piece of paper to, to, to read off of. Don Lee and all of them did. I, he says, you spoke from the heart. And I said, that's exactly what I did. I asked God to help me. I says, you utter the words out of my mouth, I'll speak. But first of all, you rebuke the Republican Party for what they are. Because right, th th what they are are, are low lives. They only think about the rich, they think about their back pocket, and they think about getting elected. And that's all they care about. How they get elected is one thing. And so I went ahead and I spoke. And one of the one of the people came out of the out of the, the board of the Republican Party and took me out in the hallway. And he told me the truth of what's going on. He says, Mike, they don't like you. Um, they they hate you because you're too truthful, you're too honest, and you're you're trying to crush everything they believe in. And I said, I didn't come there for the Republican Party, I came there for the people. And that's and that's what I did. I spoke my heart. And the delegates there that, that were there were so excited. So they went out and they dispersed all over, all over Alaska. And so when the votes came in, I only picked up 2% of the votes. And I thought to myself, how in the world did that happen? When I received 27% of the votes from the delegates, but only received 2%. And then that's when we started finding out about Dominion voting machines and what they're doing and how they're turning turning the votes around. And the 2000 Mules movie that came out, how they're doing it. And I realized that this is, this is I'm gonna share something with you that's going to shock you, but I'll share it with you anyway. There was a, there was a Washington Post article came out and a man picked it up in Fairbanks when, the, when they were counting the votes. And it said that Mike Sheldon is winning the election for governor. Right now, he's winning. And all of a sudden, that news article was pushed down, gone, and it turned out to be 2%. You see, the people, when they hear something that is good and, and they know it's from the heart of the person, that's what they want. They don't want the same old thing going on. They want change. And that's what I want to do for the state of Alaska. Now, whether that, that article come out of the Washington Post is true or not, I believe in my heart it was true. I believe that the machine suppressed. And this is the reason why that we're in the state, in the, we're in the state, in the state of Alaska, is because they're not fighting for we the people, they're fighting for large government. And if you looked at our last budget, it was the largest budget ever passed in history of the state of Alaska this last time around. Isn't that amazing? They spent every penny that they made and they made billions and billions of dollars this year off the stock market, off, off of bonds, off of oil. They made tons of money. And what did they do? They spent it all. And then they rolled some of it into the corpus of the permanent fund. And then they rolled some of it in for next year's budget. Billions. And what did they do? They gave us a little incentive of half of our permanent fund dividend with a $1,200 uh, uh, money coming from the federal government. It was added to it. And they, they made it look like they were giving